Hi, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz, a visual effects artist and software designer. Now, you may have seen some videos that I posted using Wonder Dynamics Wonder Studio. If you haven't, well, it's a product that makes the promise of being able to take footage of an actor and to replace that actor with a digital double all within just a few clicks. And I have to say, when I first saw the trailer for it, I thought that this is absolutely BS. It could not possibly be real. But now that I'm on the beta and I tried it, I'm blown away. And sure, it's not perfect, but I just want to remind you that this is the worst anything from AI is ever going to look. It's only getting better and it's getting better exponentially. So in this video, even though we're in a private beta, the company is letting us share information about it as we work with it. And I wanted to give you guys a first look. So let's take a look at it. So here I am on the Wonder Studio website, and it is just that, it's a website. You essentially, you upload your files and you do the work on their site. This way you don't rely on a computer that might be slower so that everyone gets the same speed and uh, processing power. And so here we are and you see that we've got some templates you can work with. There's uh, featured characters that you can look at. And these are some of my projects that I've done recently. Now I'm going to, before creating a new project, I wanna to go to my assets here and I'm gonna upload directly. You can already see the assets I have, some of their duplicates. I tried clipping different clips and things like that. But essentially I'm just gonna upload something here. So I'll choose to upload a video and I'm gonna grab this one called Beach Rocks. I'll click open and we're gonna watch it upload 100% complete. And then I'm gonna go into create a new project and click continue. And in your new project, you can actually upload right here if you want to. I just prefer to have it uploaded there because I can actually watch the progress of the upload and know when it's ready. So I'm going to go over here where it says my project. I'm gonna rename this to Beach Rocks, right? Hit enter and then I'm just going to go to my assets here I'm gonna drag this Beach Rocks video and I'm gonna drag it right onto this little square and this adds it to the timeline. And you can see I've got this footage of me walking on the beach. And this is a good shot right here because you can see my full body. So what I'll do is I'll go to next and when we get to the next part here, we have to choose an actor. And so I'll just choose to scan the frame for an actor. And once it's done with that, we can see that it's identified the person that it wants to replace. In this case, it's me. And I'm going to then look at the characters. So if we click here, we can see the different characters that are available. And you can see there's even some characters coming soon that look pretty cool. I'm just gonna close this out. I'm gonna grab that one called Desert Bot that's right here. I'm just gonna drag it onto me. And that will now tell it that it should replace this person with this robot. From here, I'm going to click Next and then it offers me different outputs. Right now, it can go up to 4K, although this video is only at 1080p, so I'm gonna choose 1080p, that's the highest it can go with this video. And you could choose to go with MP4s or PNGs, if you're gonna do some post work on it, you'd probably want a PNG, but we'll just go with uh, an MP4 here. And if we want, we can also get things like the AI mocap, right? So we can get the motion capture file, maybe we wanna bring that into Blender or Cinema 4D or something else or we can get a uh, blender scene if you wanted that as well. And camera tracking and character passes are coming soon. So right now I've been kind of working in After Effects and, and doing a little bit of roto just around the character to try to get like if I wanted objects to pass behind it using the uh, roto brush. But eventually we're gonna have the ability to have a character pass and a 3D camera track. And uh, for now, we'll just use that. I'm really gonna just go with the AI mocap and the blender scene just so we can look at it afterwards and just output the MP4. So I'll hit start processing and then we'll see that it's going to take a certain amount of time here. It tells me about 61 minutes and I'm gonna let that run. Okay, so now it's completed the project. Let's jump into it and take a look. I'm gonna turn off the volume so we don't have to hear it and let's just hit play and see how that looks. Now, of course, it's not perfect. This is a very complicated background. There's a lot of texture on the rock. And of course, it's trying to replace my normal human body with a very thin robot body. And you can see that there's places where it's definitely not perfect, but still it's producing a really great result and something we can work with and make better. The final version that I posted, I had done also some color grading and also added in a lens flare, and that really helped make it look a lot better as well. But overall, this is pretty solid for an hour of processing with me going and doing other work. And of course, we can now work with the files that we chose to download. So if I had chosen to download a clean plate, I could do that as well and then try to work with that and clean that up a little more. Or I could now go with the AI mocap or the Blender scene. So let's take a look at both of those. So here I am in Blender and you can see we've got our file here. We've got our robot 
walking around, um, you'll notice that there is kind of a slipping of movement to it that you wouldn't expect to see if the camera were tracked, but this isn't 3D camera tracking. That's going to come later. What we're looking at is the robot as if it were projected onto the clean plate. And in fact, we can actually bring the clean plate in here and project the robot onto that, and then we can relight the robot or retexture it or whatever so we can work with it here in Blender. Let me just quickly show you how. I'm going to go to View, Cameras, and we're going to go to Active Camera. And then once I'm in there with the camera selected, right, I'm going to go over to the Camera Object Data Properties right here. And then we're going to go over to where it says Background Images right here. And we're going to switch this to Movie Clip and we're going to click Open. And we're going to navigate to wherever we may have downloaded our clean plate. Let's pretend I remembered to do that before and I'm not just using another one that I had. And uh, go right here, select it all just to be safe and choose open clip. And now check this out. What we have going on here is we have this clean plate that has uh, no person in it and the robot is actually a 3D model. And, and from here we can relight this. And you can see it's got the 3D model, it's got the motion capture data. And speaking of motion capture, let's take a look at that. So here I am with Cinema 4D and I've got this motion capture data. It's an FBX and I'm going to drop it into Cinema 4D. Click OK. And you can see we get a camera that's going to be very similar to the Blender camera, so it's not going to be moving even though the camera in the video is. And the motion capture data for the robot will come in really tight here. And you can see that we can then use this to apply to another character. But again, we're getting that weird slipping only because the camera is not in motion. Again, eventually that's going to be available, but for now, this is what we've got to work with. So if you're using a lockdown camera, that's going to be your best way to get motion capture that can be used in any project. I was curious, so I ran some tests where I shot on a green screen with a lockdown camera, and I really was able to get much better motion data as well as no artifacts in my transition between human and character. Anyway, I hope that that helps you get an understanding of how the software works and how you might use it in your work. But I really want to just kind of revisit one thing that I said at the beginning. AI is continuously evolving. And whatever flaws you might see in what you're seeing from AI right now, it's only going to get better. But here's the thing. What I love about this product more than a lot of the other AI tools that I've seen out there is that this allows you to have real control over the input and the output. I see too many tools right now that the AI is taking over the process of creating the art. No matter how much you art direct it with terms or words or whatever, at the end, the AI makes the decision. But here in Wonder Studios, what I really love is that whatever you put into it, you get out of it. So if you really work hard at doing your cinematography and your acting and all of that, that's going to come out much better. And also at the end, you can once again take control of what you've output and make it your own and fix it or clean it up or do whatever it is you want to do with it so that you have ultimate control. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.